talk about what we saw on Thursday. What do you blame for the sell-off? And let's not forget the economic fundamentals underlying all of this, Greece and the weak U.S. economy, debt issues across Europe. I mean, this was not just a computerized trading awry. No, you're right. I mean, we were, we're down 600 points for the week anyway. So it's, it was coming. It was, it, we've had a weak week. I mean, it's all all on Greece. And if you look at yesterday, just before the real sell-off, if you look at the Japanese yen, for instance, a lot has to do with currencies because everything's tied in. We're all in these baskets. Everything's tied in. If you look at the yen yesterday, that really broke down at about 205. And that really is when everything started to go down. And I haven't heard anyone talk about that point. Uh, you know, when you, look at, when you look at the currency trade here and the issues there, look what's happening to the euro. Look at the strengthening U.S. dollar. Not a good thing for American businesses and their exports. How much does that play here tied to the Greece credit crisis and the spreading credit crisis across Europe. You know, you're 100% right. Our dollar is strengthening, not because anything the Fed or Bernanke is doing. It's all on the back of the euro being crushed over there, which unfortunately makes our exports so expensive. I mean, if you look at the last four quarters with the earnings, Every company from McDonald's to Ford has cited strong growth, strong sales coming out of Europe. Now, with our dollar more expensive, it's going to be hard to sell those things, which were way on the earnings, way on unemployment. It's a big domino effect that people aren't talking about. It's a great point. How do you uh, go into this weekend prepared? Can you? Well, I, I think a lot of us, a lot of trades I speak to, they're going to sit out the weekend. Uh, you have an election in Germany on Sunday. They're going to watch the dust settle a little in Greece because now Greece has passed the plan, but has the populace passed it. So they're going to watch that also. So I wouldn't be surprised to see any really kind of substantial volume maybe Tuesday and even Monday. Let the dust settle, see what happens overseas. But I think a lot of guys don't want to go home long on a weekend where the German vote matters so much. All right, Alan, thanks. We appreciate it so much. And finally, let's head over here. Ted Weisberg's on the phone, but want to get his perspective. He's been on the floor here uh, for more than 40 years. Ted, how long have you been on the floor here? 41 years. Ever seen a drop like you saw on Thursday? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, uh, October 87, we were down 22% in one day. Uh, yesterday, Thursday, was uh, basically child's play compared to that. But, but I would say uh, what you saw yesterday is indicative of what we're going to see over and over and over again because of the new market structure that has been dictated by the government. The elimination, for example, of the short sale rule two and a half years ago coincided with all this volatility, probably the one worst thing that's ever happened to our markets. This is the new, the new trading world. It's, it's great for the professional trader. It's great for the high-frequency trader, which is 70% of our volume today, but it is terrible for the public. It's terrible for the average investor? Oh, oh, absolutely, because the average investor, and that could be an institutional customer or an individual, didn't sign up for this volatility. The risk, the risks in the markets, markets are always risky. Any asset class is risky. But the risk that has been turbocharged into this market goes beyond anybody's acceptance levels, in my opinion. So, Ted, what can be done? The SEC, the CFTC looking into, hit re into it realistically, and, and, and I see your face. I mean... You don't think anything is going to change? Well, th first of all, they, create, they, they basically reinvented the wheel. The simple solution, as far as I'm concerned, would, would solve all the problem, is just simply reinstate the short sale rule, which they took away, because that tends to put a collar around the volatility. It doesn't take volatility out of the market, but it puts a collar around the volatility. Everything that the government has done has basically been done to supercharge the markets and to add volatility. Now, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that perhaps it wasn't their intention to do that. But the problem with rule changes and, and changing market structure is the unintended, unintended consequences. And what we are dealing with today, yesterday, and tomorrow are the unintended consequences of all the changes that have been mandated by the government on the, on the cash equities markets. The big question is, how do you uh, head into Monday? Where do you hold over the weekend? Very different if you're an average American investor or if you're a trader. Well, clearly, if you're a trader, you don't go home with positions even, even, even during the week. It has nothing to do with today's volatility. Uh, I think that, I mean, just look at today's performance. You know, the futures were strong all night, and here we are down 200 points. Now, this, you know, we can't blame everything on high-frequency trading, but it is it, to, the, to, to the degree that it, that it mainlines volatility into the markets, it is the culprit. At the end of the day, it's fundamentals that drive stock prices, corporate earnings, economics. 
and the economics in this country are improving and the corporate earnings have been terrific. But the problems in Europe are big problems and everything today is interconnected. So what happens in Europe affects us here. We have to care about it all. Heading into the weekend, a lot of major questions. I think uh, the big unknown is what will happen as a result of this. Ted, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Pleasure.